morning to you. What a beautiful day. God is good. Amen. He is always good. I actually, I had a smile when the team said, well, the, the screen's not up and running. That's not going to work today. And I said, well, we're just going to live the message because today we're going to talk a little bit about that new ground for believing. Amen. And so we either believe that uh, Jesus is life and the resurrection and the life and that he comes when we are weak to help us be strong. Amen. Or we don't. And we're going to have a, a chance to look at a story today that will show us whether or not um, we really believe all that Jesus says he is. Amen? All right, before we get started today, I'm going to lead in a word of prayer. I want you to bow your hearts before the Lord. It's about preparing your heart to receive the word of God today. God is looking for real, real people. People who are transparent before him, who, who know that human side of their being and, and who Jesus claims and wants to be in our lives. Now, we let Jesus into certain areas of our lives and we hold him back from other areas, but God is calling for people to be totally transparent about where they are so that he might lead us to a greater measure of revelation of his love and his grace available. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your love and your patience, your goodness. God, we thank you that you not only deposit faith within us, you cause us, Father, to grow. That as we look at life and the things before us each day, that those are opportunities. They are occasions for us to step into a new place of believing. They are places that can be ground for revelation. And revelation is what you desire to bring to every one of your children. God, in this world sometimes we're going to confess that it feels like we're making the journey alone. We have even failed God in our faith because we have said where are you, God? When this is going on in my life, where are you? But your word says that you never leave us, you never forsake us, that you are touched with every one of the things that come into our life. You have tasted them through the sun. So teach us today, God, to be strong, to be determined but to accept the fact that some things are just delayed. Cause us to hold on to our faith and our belief and to step up on that new ground for believing. In Jesus' name, amen. New grounds for believing. Okay, well, today we're going to read a story. And I thought, you know, I can paraphrase the story for you. I can pick out nuggets for you. But God laid in my heart this week that this entire story needs to be read and then we will experience it together because we can identify to different places of this story. Actually, we'll be looking at Martha. You know, Martha, Martha, you're worried about many things. Martha, you're a doer. Martha actually expects Jesus to be doing some stuff. You ever expected Jesus to do some stuff that he's not doing, by the way, according to what you can see? There's Mary. She's the worshiper. She's resting at the feet of Jesus. She's always seen in a posture of worship. But even Mary's having trouble holding on to her faith this time. There's Lazarus. Lazarus is the occasion. The Bible says that Lazarus has this sickness. And it is an occasion for God's glory. Now, the Bible's not saying that the sickness brings glory to God. Because sickness, disease, death, that's all negative. That's the enemy. But Jesus wants us to know that he has triumphed over all of those things. And he continues to do that each day in our lives. So maybe you can identify with having the opportunity to be an occasion, if you will, or to experience those occasions. So have you ever felt that God delayed too long to bring you help in your time of need? 
Be honest. Remember? Be honest. We're going to start. I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of John. In fact, I'm excited about this lesson because we are not only going to talk about things today, but we're going to explore them deeper on Wednesday. So we're going to be talking more about this very same chapter. We're going to be reading from chapter 11 in the Gospel of John. I'm going to read 1 through 44. If you have your Bibles, turn to it. I am going to be reading out of the Message Bible this morning as I love the way it's conversationally written. The title of it is The Death of Lazarus. A man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany. Now Bethany, so that you have some history, is a town that's about two miles from Jerusalem. It's located on the road to Jericho. I did have a wonderful picture I was going to bring this morning, but uh uh-oh. So let the Holy Spirit impress it upon you. Just know that here's the picture. Jerusalem, uh, probably, I don't know, 3,500 feet above sea level. Comes down Judean hills. There's the road to Jericho. Comes down and it ends at the Dead Sea. And the Dead Sea is probably 1,300 feet below sea level. Okay, so there's a big decline there, isn't there? Jesus is making his way to Bethany, which is located in the Judean hills on the road to Jericho. Now, Judea tends to be a really dangerous place right now. It's in the southern kingdom. It's dangerous for Jesus because he's ticked so many people off. You ever ticked anybody off and just really didn't want to go back to that spot? (laughs) No, not you. All right, (laughs) so Jesus... Uh, has these friends in Bethany. Now, he stayed there a lot of times. He's friends with them. In fact, he loves going to their home. He finds rest there. They welcome him. They have a tight relationship. In fact, I'd have to say they have this really intimate, divine human experience together. Uh, Mary and Martha live in this place with their brother Lazarus. And Lazarus um, has gotten sick And I want you to know that Mary is the one that massaged the feet of Jesus and anointed them and wiped his feet with her hair. That's the same Mary. It was their brother Lazarus who was sick. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Master, now keep in mind, these are followers. These are believers. Okay, these are not just, un- these are not unbelievers. These are believers. They, want, they have seen Jesus do miracle after miracle. Master, the one you love so very much is sick. Okay, there's the need. They have presented their need to Jesus. When Jesus got the message, he said, this sickness is not fatal. It will become an occasion to show God's glory by glorifying God's Son. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. But oddly, oh my, have Jesus ever done anything odd in your life? <laughs> oddly. Uh, <clears throat> when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed on where he was for two more days. Somebody say delay. <laughs> After two days, he said to his disciples, now let's go back to Judea. Judea that dangerous place, the West Bank of Israel. They said, Rabbi, you can't do that. Have you told Jesus that before? (laughs) You can't do that, Lord. That's not in my plan. Now let's get with the program here. Bring your miracle and let's go. The Jews are out to kill you, Lord, said the disciples, and you're actually going back there? (coughs) Jesus replied, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in daylight doesn't stumble because there's plenty of light from the sun. Walking at night, he might very well stumble because he can't see where he's going. Isn't that just like Jesus to say something like that? You know, you just want him to say, yes, I am, or no, I'm not, but instead he goes into this little thing, this little spiritual 
slash human response where you kind of go like, well, I get the daylight thing, but what is he really talking about? And what about that night? And oh my gosh, I'm totally lost now, right? And Jesus issued this word to the disciples and they're mulling it, as Peter would say. Now, basically Jesus is saying, I am the light of the world and I am walking this out and as long as you stay connected to me you will walk in the light and you don't need to worry about it because I already have a plan but if you want to walk in the dark it's going to be dangerous do you want to walk with me there's the message he announced our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep and I'm going to wake him up the disciples said master if he's gone to sleep, he'll get a good night's rest and wake up feeling fine. A little self-preservation there, do you think? We don't want to go with you to Judea, Lord. You're a wanted man. <clears throat> Jesus was talking about death while his disciples thought he was talking about taking a nap. Then Jesus became explicit. Lazarus died. And I'm glad for your sakes that I wasn't there. Oh my gosh, was that an odd thing for Jesus to say? I'm glad I was not there. You're about to be given new grounds for believing. Now let's go to him. That's when Thomas, the one called the twin, said to his companions, Come along, we might as well die with him. Notice! The little bit of disorientation and confusion there, right? He says, I'm, I'm confused, but uh, I'm going to be loyal. I'm going to follow you, Lord. I don't get where you're going. You ever said that? When Jesus finally got there, he found Lazarus already four days dead. Bethany was near Jerusalem, only a couple of miles, and many of the Jews were visiting Martha and Mary, sympathizing with them over their brother, Mary or Martha heard Jesus was coming and she went out to meet him, but Mary remained in the house. All right. There is a Jewish belief, and it was taught, the Bar Kappa, I believe, um, that when a person died and they were buried, the soul of that person lingered for about three days. It hovered because it was really trying to reoccupy the body. But on the fourth day, the body would start to decompose and the soul would say, don't want to look like that anymore. I'm out of here. <laughs> it's true. It's true. That's exactly what they believed. And so Jesus knew the customs, the beliefs, the teachings. And what's he do? He waits till after the fourth day because he wants them to know he's really dead. He's gone, all right? He isn't just in this realm of this tomb circulating and, and, you know, and waiting to come back to this body when I just kind of happened to mention it. He's gone. He's with the Father. So, let's see here. Martha said to Jesus, because she goes out to meet him, Master, if, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask, God will give it to you. Well, there's faith, isn't it? Jesus said, your brother will be raised up. Here's the revelation of where she finds her faith, however. She replied, I know that he will be raised up in the resurrection at the end of time. Well, Jesus says, here's some new crown for you, Martha. <laughs> you don't have to wait for the end, Martha. I am, right now, resurrection and life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she dies, will live. And everyone who be lives believing in me does not ultimately die at all. Do you believe this? Do you know that Jesus will always come 
to get our confession of what we believe before he takes us to that next level. Never hesitate to confess what you have experienced, know, and believe in your faith about God because it's just an opportunity for a step up. She says, Yes, Master. All along I have believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who comes into the world. I know who you are, Jesus. I may not know all the works of your hands. I may not understand your ways, but I know who you are. After saying this, she went to her sister Mary, and she whispered in Mary's ear, the teacher, notice she has just learned something. She's obviously conveying the fact that she just had this revelation of who Jesus was. Teacher, the teacher is here and is asking for you, Mary. It's your turn, Mary. You know, God, he just like, goes from one person to the next, doesn't he? He's just like, I'm going to teach you this, I'm going to teach you that, I'm going to show you this, I'm going to reveal this, and you're all going to talk to one another, by the way. There's that witness. The moment she heard that, she jumped up and she ran out to him. Mary was the hearer, wasn't she? She was waiting to hear from the Lord. Martha said, he's here, he wants to speak to you, Mary. Jesus had not yet entered the town, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When her sympathizing Jewish friends saw where Mary was running off, they followed her, thinking she was on her way to the tomb to weep there. You do realize that people lived in community, and when uh, a, someone was, uh, went home to be with the Lord, the whole community came together and weeped together. They, they loved one another in happy times and in sad times. They were there for one another. There's there's a point right there, isn't there, about the body of Christ. Mary came to where Jesus was waiting and fell at the feet of the master. She said, Master, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. She's still a worshiper, but she is holding this grief. And Jesus understands. He understands our grief. When Jesus saw her sobbing and the Jews with her sobbing, a deep anger welled up within him. What do you think that's about? He's not angry with them. He isn't angry because they're sobbing and they're weeping and they're grieving. He's angry at death. He's angry because death has to be defeated. And he's going to do it, isn't he? He's going to do it. He's mad. Jesus says, where'd you put him? Master, come and see, they said. Now Jesus wept. Got ticked off with death. There's that divinity. Then he wept. There's his humanity. The Jews said, Look how deeply he loved him. Others among them said, Well, if he loved him so much, why didn't he do something to keep him from dying? After all, he opened the eyes of the blind man, didn't he? Have you ever sat back and noticed that in your life and in the lives of others, we tend to keep score of what God does? You ever notice that? We're really keenly aware of that. It's like, like a ding. Well, he did that for so-and-so. Where were you, God, when I was going through some rough places? The answer is, he's getting ready to teach you new grounds for believing. <laughs> Amen? It's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I wouldn't, wouldn't tell you anything but the truth. Then Jesus, the anger welled up in him again. I wonder which one it is this time. <laughs> he arrived at the tomb. I still think he's mad at death. He's mad at blindness. He's mad at the futility of death. The tomb was a simple cave in the hillside with a slab of stone laid against it. Jesus said to those around him, remove the stone. <clears throat> the sister of the dead man, Martha, said, Master, by this time there's a stench because he's been dead for four days. Now Martha's just always the housekeeper. Now she's going to notice a bad smell in the place, right? 
She's the housekeeper. She, she's keeping track of all of that. And she wants to remind Jesus, are you aware? You ever notice that? The Martha in us goes like, Jesus, I know you're, I know you're supreme. I know you are omnipotent. You are all knowing. You're omniscient. You know everything. But let me just tell you. Let me just tell you something you've missed. I, I, I'm sure you've missed this because I'm not seeing you fix that. That's not fixable. And Jesus says, yes, it is. Doesn't he? He says, oh, my, 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 my. This is what he does. He looks her in the eye. Has Jesus ever done that to you? Just like, focus with me, Martha. Focus, focus, focus. And he said that to me many times. Only it's just not Martha, it's Mary. Mary, Mary, Mary. <clears throat> he looks her in the eye and he says, Didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Oh, that's right. You did say that, Lord. I remember now. Jesus says to the others, take away the stone. They removed the stone. Jesus raised his eyes toward heaven and he prayed, Father, I'm grateful that you have listened to me. I know you always do listen, but on account of this crowd standing here, I've spoken so that they might believe that you sent me. <laughs> then he shouted, Lazarus, come out. And he came out, a cadaver wrapped from head to toe with a kerchief over his face. And Jesus told the people, unwrap him and let him loose because he will witness to new ground. Jesus is always going to call us from those stenchy places in which we find ourselves. You might say, well, I don't have any of those. Yes, you do. This side of glory, get over yourself. <laughs> and stop hiding, by the way, in the tomb. Because Jesus is going to call you out. He's going to say, get out here. And he's going to say to the community, Let's heal this person. Let's restore this person. Take off the, the dead stuff that is hindering this person and restore them to that place. You do realize that that is a picture of the true church of Jesus Christ, don't you? It's not just a story, you know, that, uh, you know, so Jesus heals a person and then they never need anything else again. It's a matter of the body coming along and, you know, uh, on the word of Jesus, helping to restore another person into wholeness. Now that is the work of the Spirit. It's the work of Jesus. It is always going to be new grounds for our faith because as we watch the work of the Lord in one another, taking us to new levels of faith. And we all have these occasions where we need God to take us from a dead place. Now, I will tell you that dead places are, are places of disappointment, discouragement. When our faith hits the bottom, anybody had your faith hit the bottom before? a dead place. It's the enemy of faith and life, isn't it? Jesus wants us to be life-filled people, to be living and moving and having our being, knowing that we serve an all-powerful God who's not hindered by anything, and he cares most that we are whole. That's what he cares the most about. So, he touches our lives, he delivers us, he brings us into this intimate place with himself, and then he surrounds us with family who's going to love us and help us continue the journey. When thinking about this message, 
the lessons that I can take away from it. I take many. It's just like so big I can't hardly focus on a few points. But I'm going to say this to you today. There is no place where you find yourself where God cannot deliver you from it. He can always deliver you. And he will. And he may even delay just a tad because he's all about his time. See, God alone knows the perfect timing. Even Let's talk about our building for a minute. Even God knows the perfect timing of the opening of our new building. Why? Because there are a lot of things that God is trying to teach. Every connection that we have, including the sprinkler company and whoever else that we have touched during this journey, he wants to give them all new grounds for believing too. The other day, I had this opportunity to kind of demonize uh, one of the companies that done, had done business for us. And, and I was praying about it. I've been seeking the Lord about it diligently every day. And I, and I was so disappointed. And you know, when you're disappointed and things are not happening, you really want to blame somebody. And, and I was sitting there going like, oh. And the Lord placed in my heart to call the CEO of this company. And in a conversation with this CEO... He said, Mary, I cannot tell you how hard this is for me to. He said, the church to which I'm a part of recommended my company. He said, I'm the treasurer of that church. And, and um, we were recommended by that church to you because you have friends at that church. And you can't imagine how hard this all is for me too because I can't explain all the delays. I can't explain what is happening. I can't explain the confusion. I can't, con I can't even explain the carelessness. Mary, I can't explain it to you. All I can do is tell you I'm so sorry, and I will try to make it right to you and your congregation. I couldn't be mad at him anymore. I couldn't be mad at him anymore. Jesus is like, you done with that one? <laughs> yeah, I'm done with that dead thinking. Okay. I'm sorry, Jesus, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I know it's the work of the enemy. I should know that. I knew it was a spiritual... You know, it's like he took me, and he just... I'm going to do this to Corby. <laughs> and he looked me right in the eye, and he said, Hello. <laughs> Hello. Didn't I tell you? Yes, you did. I'm so sorry. How did I find myself here again, Lord? Humanity. Humanity. We wrestle it down all the time. We need the life and the resurrection of Jesus moment by moment. Do you know every day is a chance to experience the resurrecting power of the living Lord with our mind, our will, and our emotions? Every day. Don't tell me you go every day and you're just like this joyful little being and never has a down. Don't tell me that. I've been around some of you. And I love all of you. So I'm telling you the truth. Let him resurrect those places. Let him lift you. He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for us as a community. And here's the plan for each one to make us whole. He's going to make each one of us individually whole, but God's all about his family. So as our family comes together in this new ground for believing, connect to Christ Church in its new location, he's going to make sure that we continue on the journey towards wholeness. He's going to make sure that we are made whole. And that means change in each one of our lives, doesn't it? So he's going to take us to new levels of believing. You haven't arrived. That may be a revelation to you today. That may not. You haven't arrived to that glorious state yet. Therefore, Jesus is going to work every day to reveal more of his love to you and to me so that together we can reflect his majesty. He is an awesome God. Amen? Amen. We're going to acknowledge that the disciples would have never believed that Jesus was going to be raised from the dead, even though he's been telling them, hey, by the way, I'm going to die and I'm going to be raised on the third day. 
They would have never believed him until they saw the raising of Lazarus. But I will tell you, when they were standing at the, em- at the, at the empty tomb, after Jesus rose, this story would have come to their mind and they would have said, He is risen. Amen? He is risen. Jesus laid his life down so that we might know that kind of glorious living, that living that's not in the dead places, the living that's just alive and fresh with the Spirit of God. Jesus is the living Word, and his Word speaks life to us, and we need to let this Word speak life to us today. Amen. Well, there are many, many things I want you to take away. Number one, you need to be connected to Christ. Amen? You need that. So if you're here today and you don't know that for sure, you need to come pray with me, all right, before you leave this building. Number two, we don't have to be afraid to live, and we don't have to be afraid to die. When we know Jesus, what he was saying in this passage is, there'll be no interruption. You know me now. You will always know me, and you will always have the life that I really died to give you. So we just pass from this life into the next. For those of you who are here, you may know this. If you read the eConnect, you may not. John's mother uh, went to be with the Lord a week ago Sunday. Yesterday, I'm sorry. A week ago yesterday. And, um, you know, she, she was a part. She was a member of Connect to Christ Church. And she supported this ministry with her prayer and her resources from North Carolina. And um, so it was a lot easier to say goodbye to Martha. That was her name. Martha, because we knew that she took her last breath here. She took her next breath in glory. And there she'll be waiting for us. We don't be, we're not afraid. We're not afraid, right? That's the way God's family lives. We're not afraid. We know that he is life. Life actually isn't just found because of him. Life is is him. Amen? Amen? He is life, and he is the author of it. And so um, thank you for your prayers for our family in the midst of all of that. Just know that I want you to know that life, that life. And that's a growing relationship with God. So if you're going to be a part of this church and keep coming, you're going to grow, say whether I like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Blessings to you as you make your way out this morning. Just Know that God goes with you and he loves you. He's holding your heart and delays are just new opportunities for your learning. Amen.